What's up, everybody? Coach Roz here, a.k.a. The Motivator from FitnessBusinessMastery.com. I'm here with my main man, Mike Zanheiser, today. And today we're going to be talking about all things fitness business, not just in your gym, but what you can do to grow a lifestyle business. And that's what we talk about at Fitness Business Mastery. We talk about the overall arching of not only having a life, but building a business that's profitable and low stress. Mike, what's going on, brother? How you doing? What's happening, man? Doing good, doing good. Absolutely. Like we love to start right out the gate, man. So we just got into 2020 a couple months back. Tell me, what's the last 12 months been like for you and your fitness business? Last 12 months has really been the best part of our 10 year business so far. It, uh, it took a while to get here, but we've just been growth year over year over year. And now we're at the point where we're fully staffed for almost the first time in a long time. And things are just growing like crazy because of that. And now we're able to have more free time and expand on other things because of that, because of the team we have in place. Cool, man. You know what, that's, that's great to hear because I know that, and you know, I get to speak to fitness professionals every day and most of them, are, the biggest challenge is actually staffing. Now I've even had trouble with that because finding quality trainers sometimes that are not looking to steal your business and go out there can be a little bit difficult. What would you share with someone who's watching this about staffing, development, and I know you've done a great job with your team. You know, we, we lost a lot of good coaches early on and people that would have been key players with us still to this day, but we just really didn't meet their needs. You know, everybody, what we've learned is that everybody functions differently. Everybody has different wants. And just because I go to work, I show up, I do the job, that doesn't mean everybody's like that. Some people just want hugs. So as we've developed that and focus more on the team, focus more on treating the team like family, that's really made a huge difference and just touching them where they need to be and including them however they feel valued. Absolutely. Now, you and I are friends, so I know you fairly well. One of the things you do really well is build that team. Um, you, bring, you invite them to your home. You feed them. Tell me about some of the events that you actually host at your home. Yeah, you know, we try and do as much as possible. Every Thursday night, we have family night. So we have all the coaches over. Me and my wife, Lindsay, cook dinner for everybody. We hang out, play some games after. And we don't have uh, scheduled sessions on Friday morning. So it's really hard to get the whole team together because people are getting up at five, six, four in the morning. So Thursday nights is a great night to get that in to where everybody can make it. Now, did you actually have to strategically take the Friday mornings off or was it something that just kind of worked out really well for you? No, no, it was, it worked out great. We did that a long time ago. Um, mostly because back in the day, I was worried about coaches showing up every day for sessions and I didn't want to have to wake up five, six days a week. So we cut those out and they were our smallest attended for our large group and our small group sessions anyway. Uh, so we did that about four or five years ago and you know, it's been great. So the coaches don't get burnt out as fast and it gives, gives us a time to do in-house stuff. So paperwork, desk dates, nutrition talks. So we're still working with the clients. We just don't have actual training sessions on that day. That's brilliant. I know I've done that as well within my businesses where we actually have never, we haven't had Sundays ever. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I felt that was important was that, you know, like you have to look at your business model. Someone can't just say, oh, you know, what? I'm going to start to take Fridays off. I'm going to take Sundays off. I would highly recommend if you're watching this to take, look at your schedule. Like Mike said, find the spots that aren't as profitable and find a way that you can utilize that time slot either for family building, team building, or just getting back and making sure you get work on your business, not just in it. Really important. Yeah, it, it's, it started on, we started Friday nights because that was the lowest attended session. So we cut those out and then we looked at it even a little deeper and Friday mornings was the second lowest. So that was the next, next to go and nobody's ever noticed or said anything about it. Perfect. So real quick, I want to give you 120 seconds to give us the 30,000 view of your business. What does your business model look like right now? And then we can go from where it started. Cool. Right now we do mostly large groups and small group training. We have four locations and we've been in business since about 2009. So we started with, you know, one location quickly outgrew. I think we had 1500 square feet grew into uh, fell into 10,000 square feet right away, which was way more space than we need, uh, which turned out good in the end. 
but then we had a hard time getting friends of members to come that were further away. So if you live 20, 30 minutes away, the people knew us, loved us, they came, they saw the value, but it was hard to get their neighbors. So figured out a way that we'll just open up a location out near them. So we opened a second location to get their friends to come and it kind of grew from there. So now we have the four locations covering about 20, mi 20 mile square radius. And we've got a team of almost 20. So a, a lot of stuff has changed. A lot of stuff has evolved over then. Uh, you know, back, back then I used to coach every session. I used to do every consultation. I used to do all the marketing. I used to walk around with flyers. Now I really haven't coached a session in about three or four years. So it's, it's been a huge evolution, but um, it's, it's been fun. Absolutely. Now, it's, it's obvious that you have four locations, full staff of 20 people, you're doing well. But let's talk about those times when you weren't. Can you tell, tell us the story about when the shit was tough, when you were struggling and trying to make this all work? Because you and I have been friends and we've been in private groups and masterminds together for years. And I've seen your evolution, which is beautiful. But everybody, you know, everyone talks about their highlights. Let's talk a little bit about your low light. You know, there's, there's been a lot of times, especially when we had one, two locations when we were first starting out. And you know, this happens to everybody. This is how we all start. We were a personal trainer. I started personal training in uh, 2000. So I was just out of high school doing that. And I loved working out with people. I liked helping people. And that was what was fun. But as we started to grow, it added a lot more stress. You know, I wasn't originally a business person. I wasn't originally a leader. So those are all skills that I've had to develop out of necessity over the course of the time. But back then when I was coaching every session and doing everything, um, you know, I was never home. I didn't get to see my daughter. I didn't get to see my family. So that put a lot of stress on that. It put a lot of stress on me financially at the gym because I wasn't able to hire anybody at that time because I didn't have the business skills. I didn't have the marketing skills. So, you know, that was really the hardest time uh, before, before we got busy enough that we brought my wife, Lindsay, on full time. You know, we never got to see each other. She had a job. I had a job. Sometimes she would come down to the gym after she got off of work. She'd still be there and we'd end up just sleeping on the floor. Not because we had to sleep on the floor in the gym, but just because we were so tired, we didn't want to get up and leave. So that, that was definitely the hardest time way back then. Gotcha. Now that, that, that shares that that's cool because, you know, like everybody has their evolution, especially in this game. You know, some people have one gym, two gyms, maybe uh, what was it, the, the mindset that you knew that you said, okay, I'm a business owner, I'm a trainer, now I'm a business owner, I, had to, I have to transition into a leader. What was that like, and what are some tips you could share with someone who may be in that position in their business? You know, when we got started back then, I didn't even know that leadership was a thing, or, you know, I knew nothing about business, nothing about marketing, it just kind of fell into it and it happened. But as we uh, grew a little faster than we should have, and we were trying to hire people, but we weren't, we didn't have set pricing. So the numbers didn't align. The accounting wasn't there. If there was money, we spent it. If there wasn't, we borrowed it and spent it from somewhere else. That's, uh, you know, the, one of the biggest things that we had to learn for sure. So I know I talk a lot about these five pillars, marketing, sales, operations, customer service, and finance. You just mentioned finance right now. And my wife actually is an accountant and I started a bookkeeping business because I saw so many personal trainers struggling with their books. And like you said, I just look at my checkbook and be like, oh, there's a thousand dollars in there. I, this piece of equipment is 800, I can buy it. That is a recipe for disaster. Definitely. Tell us a little bit about how you had to overcome that, those things and how, and where are you now with your, your books and your numbers and accountants and stuff like that? Uh, you know, right now we actually this year for the first time just sat down with a guy and he does more strategy business planning from the accounting standpoint. So we've always man, my wife, Lindsay, is awesome with that with spreadsheets and everything. It's, you know, not my creative brain type of thinking. So she's she's got all that on track. Uh, she knows all the numbers and make sure that they're all working. But as we've started to grow now, like I said, after 10 years, it took us to actually have enough money to where we could sit down and pay somebody to help us grow our business from the financial side, from that, that strategy side. And, you know, I've talked to people ever since I met with that guy now, do it right away. Doesn't matter what it costs, get in there, do it right away. Because if we would have known about the money, 
about the finances now, what I knew, or if I knew that six years ago, we'd have been retired already. Wow. That's a, so that's just a lesson that you had to take and endure over the time as being a business owner. Definitely. I'd, I'd highly, I'd, I agree with you. That's something that, you know, Greg, my business partner and I, Greg is the, like yourself, you have Lindsay, I have Greg is the guy who really works the finance and the numbers. I'm strategic marketing sales. He's operations, customer service. But one of the things that if you're watching this, there's a book called Profit First. Really good book to get you going, get open your mindset to actually thinking about this type of information. Because as we transition, Mike has done a great job of understanding income streams and understanding multiple income streams. As a personal trainer, if you're the only income stream that you're bringing in as a trainer, as maybe you have two or three coaches with you, you're going to find yourself burnt out, bitter and broken at some point. We all do because you can't do it all. Mike, share with us a little bit about your finances when it comes to other income streams for your gyms and things like that. You know, now that I've had a lot more free time since we are uh, fully staffed and we've got the team running good, I handle a lot of the marketing stuff, but we're also focusing on more guerrilla marketing, hardcore lead generation since, you know, Facebook is changing and always evolving. So we're staying up to trends with that too. But now we've got it into, we had at one of our locations, we have a lot of space. We have a lot of extra space. Uh, about a year ago, I built some axe throwing ranges. So if you don't know what that is, it's kind of like a mix between darts, but cooler. So we, we built that. Um, we build and donate uh, outdoor playhouses and play spaces for kids for a nonprofit that we do. And somebody brought me a lot of plywood and it was the wrong kind of plywood for what we use for the playhouses. So I was trying to figure out what to do with it. So I built two axe throwing lanes originally just for our members for something to do on the weekends. So they could come in, not go out to eat, you know, stay out of the bar or something like that. But it took off. It's been real popular. So we opened that up to the public about three months ago. And so now we're open for the axe throwing on Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday morning, which are three times that we weren't open in the gym anyway. So we're just trying to maximize the space that we have, not really any extra overhead, but we're also getting 150, 200 bodies in the gym and they're they're paying me to talk to them for an hour. Naturally, the conversation at the gym comes up. So that's been a huge, not only an income generator, but a lead generator for us too. What do you expect to generate in 2020 for that part of your business? That part, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not bad. Uh, probably 120. That so is it, it, you know, so you're, gonna, you're looking to bring in about 120K just from that alone. Yeah, that, that's a great added extra income stream. And especially with, since we already have the space, there's not a lot of extra overhead with that too. That's brilliant. Now, Mike, you're, you're great with your hands. So like you're able to do all this cool stuff. You're very creative um, and you're able to utilize your superpower to actually not only enhance your business, but to grow other income streams. Tell us a little bit about what, what other income streams have you used your skill set to do? Well, we've done, uh, we do have a, a t-shirt print shop. So we've got two full-time guys running that. We also do exterior modeling. So we do siding and windows. Uh, you know, that's starting to ramp up now that the weather's starting to break. It's, uh, I think it's a nice 50 degrees out here in Rockford, Illinois today, which is, which is awesome. Um, but, you know, what we've gotten into a lot personally since we have the construction background has been recently a lot of rental real estate. So in the last year and a half, we've acquired, I think we close on two houses next week. So that'll be about, I think, 14 houses we've acquired and have rented out now. Dude, I love hearing that because when you went, I've watched this evolution and it's so great to see that someone like yourself has taken their fitness business and turned it into a business that now is going to have a legacy for their family, man. When you got real estate and you know, we're dabbling in real estate. It's something that mm -hmm. I've had a passion for and learned over the last years. And now that I'm down in South Florida, real estate is really popping. It's growing. Um, I'm looking to build my rental businesses around here as well. What is something you could say about what if, if there's a trainer who's doing well, has mm -hmm. their business up and going, what's the first step that you would advise them to do if they want to take that next step and say, hey, you know what, I'm looking to, to take some money and, and put it into some investments. What would you share with them? You know, I think they're hands down that housing is an amazing investment. Uh, where we're at, we don't have a lot of appreciation, but because of that, if the market turns, we're also not going to lose a lot. 
the rental market will always be stable. Even if the market turns, people still need a place to live. You always need something to eat and you always need somewhere to live. So that's been a, a really good investment for us. And, you know, our uh, journey our, for the investment part of that started probably four years ago. Because being self-employed, we weren't showing a lot of income on paper. So when we went to get a loan, they were like, we can't give you any money. So we're like, oh, shit, now we can't buy anything. So we had to take two years and uh, show on a W-2 paycheck that we had enough money to get into the loans that we wanted. So originally, we sat down with our financial planner and the banks, and they said, you need to show this much for this long, and you need to have this credit score to get approved to get into the type of loan that you want to do. So it took us two years before we could even do anything of planning ahead. So it wasn't just, you know, something that happened. It, it took a long time. So you had to put your strategic hat on for a minute and say, okay, what do I need to do? Because we're all small business owners here. And mm -hmm. I know that I've been able to, you know, the old school mentality is hide as much as you can, you know, keep those expenses, you know, higher and, and don't show profit. But a lot of trainers, if they're watching this right now, I want you guys to think about it. If your goal is to buy a home, if your goal is to have real estate and to have some investments, you got to hear what Mike said. Start to put yourself in the right position now. Meaning, yeah. and, and if you look at your credit score, I monitor my credit, credit score weekly, man. I want to make sure that nothing affects it. And I know that you know this, but it's like when you're looking at that, people think, oh, you know, credit isn't important. It's everything. Because when you see something that's an opportunity, if you want to go get money, without a good credit score, you're not going to be able to get it. Yeah. So that's yeah. And e even if you just want to grow your business, you know, we have four locations. We've been doing a consistent high six-figure income and earnings on the business for a long time but not showing that on paper you know the people don't want to give you money for that uh even though our credit score was really good and we didn't have any debt because we didn't have any credit because we could never get you know credit for anything so we didn't show any income uh that was that was a big shocker but it's uh it's always good and you're probably ahead of the game tax wise anyway to give yourself a paycheck uh but it it's uh it's something that we didn't ever think about until we needed it. And then once we needed it, it was, took me two years to figure it out. But uh, Dude, one, other, one other way to go is PayPal does financing and they go straight off of your business income, not your P&L. It doesn't matter to them how much you lose or how much you make. They will loan you money straight off of your income and bank mm. statements. I highly recommend you grab a copy of the One Hour Trainer book, a 90-day roadmap to creating a fitness business that you love and that is profitable, which is going to help you have more income, impact, and independence, which is going to lead you to the opportunity to living a lifestyle fitness business by design. We created this business book because we knew that it was about practice and theory that we're using in our business, not just talking about it. The industry is thriving right now, and if you want to build a business that's sustainable and scalable, you need to pick up a copy of the One Hour Trainer book now. So, that's so tell us a little bit about, I know way. you use that as a strategy, but just so someone that doesn't go out there and be like, oh, I'm gonna go get you know 100,000 from PayPal. When you use this, you're using it for quick turnover and replaying, and I'm back, correct? Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, it's a, it's a, a loan like that is a steep repayment. You know, they, they want it paid back in a year. So you're making big weekly payments to pay off this note. So for something like that in the real estate market, we would use that to buy a lower cost house, 30, 40, 50,000, fix it up, rent it out. Six months later, we would refinance that at the bank, take the money from the bank gave us and pay off the loan. Great strategy, my man. Let's just talk a little bit about, you know, because one of the things that, you know, people want to know is like, I love to talk about lifestyle. You know, we get to go on vacations. I know you're going on a cruise next week or coming up in a couple months. Yeah. Um, toys, things like that. I, I, I'm, I'm really moving away from that. I'm studying a lot of Dave Ramsey lately. So I'm going back to kind of old school, living a little bit below my means so that I can okay. think about the future. But tell us a little bit. I know you got some toys and things like that. What does what lifestyle look like for Mike today? As yeah, you know, that's, when you were growing up. 
that's a you know that's a thing that we've kind of been along the same path as uh, as we get more of the rental real estate as more of the investments are profitable and we've got more income streams from different businesses coming in uh, we're looking at doing less and with that comes kind of a reduced lifestyle so that we can retire earlier retire less and when I say retire I mean financially like I'll, I'll do this forever what the hell else am I gonna do uh, but now, you know, in a couple years ago, we moved and we bought a house on the river, which was always a dream of mine, always something we wanted to do. So we, I spend every day out on the water, uh, at least in the three or four months that it's nice in Rockford. <laughs> and, you know, we've, we've got a boat, uh, we've got some jet skis. So we do that and we hang out on the water and that, but that keeps us busy, gives us something to do. And we also entertain people and entertain clients. Uh, but, you know, with that too, we've had to make sacrifices. My truck costs a thousand dollars. We don't have any car payments, so you know we we made a trade off in that respect. Kind of looking at a Dave Ramsey approach, where we gave less here and took a little more over here. But now yeah, that, I love hearing that now that we do have more free time, you know, like I said, we're always growing, we're always evolving. Uh, me and my wife Lindsay now pretty much engage the team, keep everything running smooth, put out the fires, and focus on the growth of everything we're free schedule wise to be able to take a trip here and there. And you know, a lot of this stuff, we can now work remotely from anywhere too. So especially as we get a little more closer to financially free, which is, you know, should be coming up pretty soon. We're trying to figure out kind of that work life balance. And now that we're not grinding so hard every day, kind of fill in those gaps with stuff that I used to like to do. You know, I was at a, I was at a conference one time and, the guy asked, what do you like to do? And I was like, you know, Facebook ads and uh, like <laughs> d design stuff. He was like, no, no, like, what do you really like to do? I didn't have a fucking answer. Like, I couldn't remember anything I used to do. So now, you know, I'm, a, I'm in a poker league once a month. I'm in a, a shooting league. Uh, we just started an axe throwing league. So I'm doing that, playing softball one or two nights a week. So, you know, kind of getting back to a lot of the stuff that I used to like to do that took me eight years to remember. Wow, man. I love hearing that because uh, it's the same thing, man. I, I decided to, on a whim to move from New York to Florida. I'm riding my bike as an endurance athlete now. I am shooting. I'm doing a lot of things that before I said I didn't have time for because I needed to build a business. Now I have time for things that I like doing because the business is built. And I put the 10 years plus into building systems, organization, things like that. But I, I think that I want people to hear what you just said that you had to take a step back to figure out like a lot of times we see these guys online right now, everybody's flossing with their cars, their big houses and things, but they actually haven't grinded enough to actually earn that stuff. And then yeah. that and then they wind up in debt, they wind up deep in credit challenges, stuff like that. I love that you said your, your trucks a thousand bucks. I'm actually looking to sell my car, get myself a nice truck and actually pay off some debt that my wife has, which is awesome. Yeah. So like, these are the things that we don't need to have anymore that I thought I needed. And I wanted it for a short period of time. And then I'm like, who needs that? That's that. That's not going to bring me happiness. I do want a really nice bike though. So I have to go. <laughs> well, you know, you got to have that. It's your sport. And you know, when we were 20, uh, early thirties, like retirement slowing down, uh, that was never a thing. It was just go, 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 go spend, spend, spend. So, you know, we had all that stuff, but now I, less is more, you know, I don't, I don't want to do as much. So yep. we're, we're trying to make that as, as streamlined as possible. Cool, man. I love that you said retire and financially free. Give us your definition of what that really means. Yeah. Our goal is uh, pretty much through rental real estate is to cover all of our expenses and the lifestyle that we want to live so we come up with a number and then we just work backwards and figure out what that number needs to be uh, especially most of us being self-employed i've been self-employed forever i think the last job i had was a waitress and uh when you get talking about retirement we don't have a 401k we don't have social security i've never paid into anything like that if that's even around you know when people our age or younger than us get to retire anyway so we were looking at different avenues of how we could make the best return on our money, especially for the long term. And that's, uh, that's kind of where we fell in at. Smart move. 
So let's talk. I mean, you mentioned earlier Legion. I know you're you're someone who's a student of this game. The fit game is something that you don't play around with. I've seen you for years going to conferences, hiring mentors, coming to my events. Um, but you know right now the landscape is shifting. I see it in Facebook. It's shifting. Instagram, it's TikTok. Where is lead generation right now for your business and where are you bringing the leads in to fulfill your, your business? You know, we've got... Uh... We brought a, we've been doing Facebook ads, you know, since they started. Uh, obviously, things right now are a little different. Got, uh, we're hooked up with a company, m and Marketing, and they've helped us a ton just through running the, the ads themselves. You know, we still do a lot of the creative, and they help us out with that, too. But that was kind of the last piece that I had to, the last responsibility I had. So that was almost the last thing that I had to delegate from my daily responsibilities. And they've done an awesome job. So we're still bringing in a ton of leads from Facebook and Instagram. But, you know, even before that, and the last probably six, eight months, we've really focused on a lot of old school, more guerrilla marketing, networking. I joined a BNI networking group. And, you know, I've never really saw the value of paying to be in a networking group where you don't go there, not like a mastermind, not like where you go and learn stuff. And, you know, you just go there and talk to other people. But we meet once a week. And it's consistent every week. So now I've got a group of 30 guy, business owners that are pretty much a sales force for me, sending me leads like crazy. Where when I was a member of the chamber, even when my wife was on the board for the chamber, we would go to the events, but it was really hit or miss who showed up. So if you network one guy one month, you might not see him again ever or for six more months. So the BNI has been really good. Um, you know, I know you just talked about it, uh, community partnerships have been huge for us uh the way we've got that set up working with them and even things simple things like back to signage putting a banner on the side of the building for as long as the city will let us and just advertising <laughs> the price unlimited training 199 or putting flags out by the road um you know paired that with the fundraisers that we're doing that's pretty much where we're getting a lot of our leads we're doing one fundraiser a month per location consistently every month uh, that, and we've been doing a lot of extra workouts, free events, just kind of like a fundraiser, but with nothing attached to it, opened up to everybody, opened up to the community. Um, and I think that the, uh, just those right there have been the biggest lead generators for us in the last six months. I love it. So you just really, basically, you make sure that, and you, you I talk about the marketing wheel and mm -hmm. having multiple spokes. That's what you basically just laid out there. There's, you're not doing one thing. You're doing a little bit of everything just in case one doesn't work out one month or two months. You know that you still have consistent leads and your income is still going to flow in to take care of your, your staff, correct? Definitely. And we've been doing also uh, a monthly news spot on Sunday morning. So we get about a five to seven minute spot. And it it's not really, I don't know the impact that it generates from actually being on TV on Sunday morning at nine o'clock. But what we get is we go in with three to four strategic content making clips that we want to cut out of that segment. So my wife, Lindsay, is gorgeous. You know, obviously, I don't have the best appearance on TV, so we let her do it all. And so out of that, we can now take the three or four clips showing that we've got some kind of authority from being on TV. And that's what we use for our Facebook marketing or ads or even just sending out emails to new leads. I'm going to take a second here just to be straight with you. You are one of the most humble, successful people I know in, in my network. I think if you guys are watching this and you guys are paying attention, Mike is more than humble. Like we got to go in our fit industry. It's all about ego. Look at my abs. Look how cool I am. Look at my million followers. This guy has four locations, definitely cruising into that seven figure mark, multiple homes, looking at financial freedom. And all he does is give it back to his wife. He is a good looking dude. He knows it, but he doesn't want to pump that out. That's what it takes to be successful in this game long term. I mean, I feel like if I, there are a couple people that I would truly invite to my home, invite to my studio, call up and say, let's hang out. You're one of those dudes, Mike. So I want to thank you for your time today, brother. Oh, I appreciate it. So I'm gonna, we're going to land this plane with, I want you to drop whatever 60 seconds. What is one value bomb you can lay on a gym owner who may be in the situation where they're like, shit, you know what? I'm about to get burnt out, bitter, and broken. I want to take it to that next level. I love this industry, but I just can't figure out how to get where I need to get. 
two things I could recommend if I was going to go back and I was going to start over. One would be less is more. Focus on the one thing you're good at focus on the one thing you're good at, and then focus on the one thing you're good at again, and just keep doing that. Don't have a bunch of new ideas. Whatever program you're running, if it's successful, just do that, and do that harder until you can't do that anymore. Then look at expanding something. If you've got days and times that are open, don't add different stuff. Focus on the one thing you're good at. It makes the marketing message easier. It saves you time on the back end from having to create and do different systems, especially as you start to grow. And then, Treat your team like family, but actually treat them like the family that you like, not like just like the distant cousins. And if you do that, if you can keep the message congruent as you start to grow, especially when you bring on more team, and no matter what you do, no matter what the situation or what your pay is, if you can find the team members that will do anything for you, show up every day, it's gonna make your life way easier in the long run because the biggest hurdle and the biggest thing that hurt our business over the time and you know you talk about all the time Roz is trainers who either leave open up a studio or a business take half your clients with them which actually has been really good for us in the past because it's happened twice neither of them made it more than a year so we ended up getting all those clients back when they realized that it wasn't the trainer it was the system and we got to buy all their equipment for pennies so that was pretty good, but keep it simple. Less is more and treat your team like gold and everything moving forward will be a way easier. Awesome, brother. Well, I think you guys heard it there, man. I, and like I said, it's just about being humble, doing the damn thing. And we created something called the OHT method. And the OHT method is just really exactly what you just said there. We went away from running, you know, 14 day, 28 day, six weeks. We have one core offer. We have one signature program and we're running it across from New York and Florida and we're no longer doing anything else. So that advice that you just shared there is a true value bomb because it's something that it took me almost eight years to figure out because I was throwing up. I had to create new meal plans. I, had to, I thought that that was the special. Create a new offer. Now we have one offer. We only focus on that and we drill deep. So appreciate yeah. your time, my man. You know, stuff like this is awesome. I really appreciate everything you guys are doing. You know, we've been to every event that you have. Uh, I try and get out there as much as possible. And I'm even looking to book a trip this month, uh, head down to Miami for a day or two. So whenever you're free, just shoot me a message and let me know. Uh, you know, I probably take three, four showers with you a week and you don't even know it. <laughs> Uh, because I'm trying, to, I'm trying to maximize my time, get as much in as possible, but you've got so much content uh, in, the, in the groups and the, the YouTube page. You know, you're always there anytime I need anything. I can get on a call with you anytime. Uh, I appreciate you. Absolutely, brother. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate everything you do as well. Thank you for keep crushing it. My name is Coach Roz, a.k.a. The Motivator from FitnessBusinessMastery.com. This has been another Fit Pro Monthly Interview with Mike Zanheiser. Have a great day, everybody. Boom! What's up, everybody? Thanks so much for watching my video here on YouTube. If you enjoy the content and you want more content on building a fitness business that you love, here's what I want you to do. Make sure you subscribe, leave your questions and comments below this video, and if you really liked it, share it with your friends. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Make it a great day. Boom! I'm out.